Hello, welcome to Tasty Classics. My name's Ben Molesworth, and in front of me here is what appears to be some sort of Rolls Royce, maybe a silver shadow. Can't quite work it out myself. I mean, if you sort of squint, maybe you can see the resemblance. Cool. Just put my contact lenses back in. Oh, oh, oh God, it's, it's one of these. You know, I mean, in, in 1904, Rolls-Royce came along and they built their first ever sort of passenger car and they've been developing them ever since. And frankly, they needn't have bothered because in the late 70s, Austin came along, the famous British Leyland company came along and manufactured this thing, which to the purists out there is called a Vanden Pla, or as I like to call it, an Allegro Vanden Plas. Because I'm from up north. Um, but yeah, look at it. Isn't it absolutely fantastic? It's gorgeous. Look at this massive front end. Look at this grill. What a design choice. Now its official title is something like Austin Vanden Pla 1500 because it's got the 1500 engine in it and there's no Allegro badges on the car even though it is quite obviously an Allegro just with a bit of a bull nose uh, front end on it and some tables that fold in the back so I'm led to believe. Um, but I think it's quite a striking looking beige motor you know and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it because over the next couple of days I've got to try and get this thing running and driving and drive it all the way down to North Wales where I'm going to see my uncle who used to have one of these and I'm going to show him the car and see what he thinks of it. Now normally that would be a piece of cake, it'd be super easy, however this particular car here has been sat, parked in a locked garage away from the world since 1991 so it's been off the road for 32 years the engine has not ran for 32 years the wheels have only turned as they've gone onto my trailer and off the trailer so i don't know what i'm in for to be honest what i do know though is the engine does turn over because i'm quite savvy with that sort of stuff nowadays and i like to have a check of that beforehand so that's a good start and you know on the outside of it it looks to be in pretty good shape so the story behind this thing is that an old fella owned it and he stopped driving back in 1991 and when he stopped driving he didn't want to get rid of his lovely Vanden Pla and he parked it in his garage and that's where it sat as time went on for 31 years as he unfortunately passed away as people do and the car was forgotten about and it was left there for a very very long time until I came along to rescue it you know hopefully rescue it anyway and just on the face of it it doesn't look too bad does it I mean look at this paintwork here you know I reckon that'd shine up really well get a you know chuck a buffer over that and I think it'll come up dead nice look at these seals the seals look really well back window looks good what are those inside there? Speakers, we'll have to have a look at those shortly. And yeah, it's the Vanden Pla, darling, or Vanden Plas, as I like to call them. But yeah, what a cool looking thing, you know? And one thing that's really impressing me is that these tires have still got air in them. Now we put air in these when we pulled the car out of the workshop, out of the, out of the garage and they've still got air in them now i mean i think we're probably going to have to replace them aren't we but yeah because i think they are <laughs> fairly old but aren't they in good nick never seen anything like it love that hubcap it's a shame there isn't any more of those on the car i wonder if they're in the car somewhere this wing looks in fantastic condition there's a bit of black spots on there but maybe some thinners would get that out and one of those side repeaters is missing from the other side, I think. Yeah, you can see that there. Is the plug still there? Mm, yes, it is, but it's a bit rusty. But yeah, it's missing its side repeater from that side. And this wing has 
has got a bit of rot in it. Maybe it could do with a new wing over here. But, you know, inside there, kind of okay, maybe. Won't know until we get it up in the air, really. Someone's nicked the mirror off there as well, that's fine. But look at it, it's in really good shape, look at this. All your scuttle and everything there, your seals again. Look at these window seals, man, they're in such good condition. Look at all this here. Really, really nice. Bonnet and everything's good. Again, a couple of little bits of, I don't even know what that is. A couple of little bits of rust on the edges there and round there, but and there as well just a bit from the bonnet but generally pretty good neck and it's very straight you know I think this bumper I mean look at that I think there is potential that that might shine up and look like new I wonder if this would as well yeah good weekend's worth of elbow grease maybe these things are a bit mad aren't they I just stuck them on. I think you could quite easily remove all of these. All the lights and everything though, really good. All the back here, back balance and stuff, you know, the boot lid. Very, very decent. This arch. I mean, I can see a little bit of inside there and it looks pretty good. Just a bit of bubbling on the arch around the fuel cap there. And remember as well, this is the second Vandom Plus we've had and the first one that we had was well probably an equally as good nick i would have said body wise so who said these things rust eh not me although maybe a little bit there nice bit of kit one of the things that i have noticed and i sort of noticed immediately as i was pulling it off the trailer and the entire underside of the car was being ripped off by my trailer is the suspension looks very drum and bass looks very very hip-hop absolutely zero travel so i think we all know what's happened there and i'm hoping it just needs to be pumped back up <laughs> but i'm sure it's not going to be as simple as that let's have a look what's inside this car I've had a brief look through the windows and it's pretty exciting. God, that, it's like brand new. How good. Super clean inside. Look at this thing, hey? Dead smart. Nice, uh, couple of little spots over there. And a couple down there but I mean overall that is a very very clean car if you're wondering what that thing over there is as well that is a Panard PL17 which is a parts car that I used to rebuild my Panard Dyna Z which is another fantastic series I think it's like 10 parts series on my YouTube channel so if you're new to the channel when this has just dragged you in off the streets Go and watch that because it's pretty cool, you know, it's good fun, I enjoyed it. Oh wow, oh wow, oh keys, yes. Oh is this a mirror that we're missing? <gasps> Amazing, right, sniff test. <laughs> oh that is unmistakable. Good Lord, look at this leather, that smells as if like, it, it's a mix between the Moulin Rouge, but if the Moulin Rouge sold Sunday dinners, you know, with gravy and Yorkshire puddings. Oh my God, I hope those are the hubcaps down there. Wowee, look at this dash. That's a super cool little gauge cluster there really like that. My first ever car was an Austin Maxi and this is reminding me a lot of that Maxi straight away. I'm amazed by these seats though. Look at the condition of these and thankfully I'm not going to have to wet back them, I have to wet back everything that comes in here. 
I think that just needs sort of gluing back down. God, look at the condition of it all. The carpets are immaculate. Look at this door card. Right, does this work? Oh, of course it does. British engineering, man. Okay, one of those. Now, is that the right one? This is amazing. Is this car complete? What else have we got in here? Lockheed brake parts. Oh, wow. I mean, that looks like it's completely not going to be usable, but nice. I don't even know what it is. Looks like the seal off the end of the master cylinder or something. Interesting. What's that? Just another little bum hole. Don't know what it is. Uh, right, okay. Very smart. Down here again, very solid. I mean, a little bit of surface in places, but all really nice. I mean, look at that A pillar there. Really top jaw stir. What's behind door number two? Okay. Nice. Yeah, a little bit more crustiness on the bottom of the door, but nothing untoward. Missing its winder. Look at that there as well. Proper nice. A little bit of crustiness down there as well, but nothing too bad at all no big holes and don't forget as well this thing is roadworthy exempt so it does oh sorry um mot exempt so it doesn't have to have an mot but what it does have to have is airplane style tables wow let's do that again for posterity okay maybe i shouldn't have done that okay Okay, we've broken it. Oh, no. Oh, ah. There's just a knack to it. Look at these back seats. Look at this. Oh, wowee. Super good condition. Incredible, Nick. A bit of leather feed on those. They look like new. That is the UK version of... Um, Bang and Olive's in there, Harry Moss. Whoever Harry Moss was. A few little ripples on the headline in there, but all in all in good nick. You could probably just inject a bit of glue into those and stick it back on with a credit card or something. But yeah, really nice. All looks in such good condition. <laughs> it's nice to have a clean car for once, isn't it? Bloody hell. Look at that ashtray down there. We've got a winder this side, that's good. God, look how clean this thing is. Again, really nice arch. Might leave that open actually, get a bit of this, bit of this fug out of there. And we've got four opening doors, look at that. Oh wow! It's the other side repeater. <laughs> Bit of gluing and MacGyvering might get that back on there. Does this one work? Oh my god, what a dream. Might keep this. Use it for getting home and back in. If it runs. One. And a beauty ring. Two. And a beauty ring. Three. And a beauty ring. We've got all the hubcaps for the car. That is a full set of hubcaps. Bit of metal polish on those again, cut like new. And a fuel pump. Great. Little passenger side ashtray there. What's in here? Tax discs. Look at that. 31st of December 1991 that expired. Oh wow, look at this. Seychelles CX460 auto stop. Please pray to God that that works. Quartz clock, heater. Don't know what that is. Choke. It's got it all, man. It's got it all. What's that? 
Oh, it reclines. I haven't seen a single spider in this shit either, which is ominous, isn't it? Why not? Where have they all gone? Clip that back in there. Don't want to pull that down. Is there anything going to kill me? No, very good condition. Uh, right. Ah. So pleased you got those hubcaps. They're probably about a million quid each on eBay, aren't they? Gearbox feels exactly like you'd expect it to. Um, initial impressions are this is incredibly comfortable in here. And it, it's it's not disgusting. Granted, it needs a bit of a wipe down in places, but it's not disgusting. This is amazing. Hello. Wow. Right then. Miles. We are showing a very, very genuine 48,000 miles on this car. 48,423, which is super low mileage. So he's done, what, you know, four, four and a half, four thousand eight hundred miles a year or something? I don't know. I don't, can't do maths. But how good is that? So I'm hoping that, you know, we might stand a chance with some stuff. Under the hood of this thing should be a 1.5 litre straight four. God, that bonnet's in good nick. Look at this lip. Twin SUs, man. This thing's going to be a rocket ship. Let's just start to analyse the condition of things. One thing I can see immediately is the windscreen washer bottle I don't know if you can see from there, I'll show you in a second. It's like bright blue liquid in it. It looks immaculate. You can see inside there, the filter's looking, oh, it's a spider. Uh, in half decent condition, whatever. I don't think it's supposed to do that. All the bolts are out. Fuck. And I have just spotted this distributor there as well. Is this going to fight us like the last one did? The coil's also just sort of dangling there in the middle of the engine bay. Okay, maybe this might not be as straightforward as I first envisaged. All those belts are on. Right, do you want to look? You can tell me what you think of it instead, eh? Look at all these inside the wings, everything. Immaculate, man. Wowee. Warning, rotating pulleys do not work in this area when engine is running. I wasn't going to anyway. That feels a bit crusty inside there. Bone dry expansion tank. Nice, okay. Look at this little fan here. The size of the radiator compared to that fan. Not sure what it's supposed to do that. Is it going to cool anything? Hmm. The, uh, the fan on my laptop's a bit bigger than that. Right, these twin SUs look really cool. We'll see what they're like. Is all the linkages free? Yeah, kind of. Doesn't look very messed with either. What's this down here though? Oh, that shouldn't be there. See that down there? Hmm, I think that should probably be connected to that there. But it's just been wedged down there underneath this thing. Ah. Again, we've got to have a little bit of a fettling here because this thing, is this off completely? Oh my God, I can just take it off. Oh my God. Hey, it's pretty nice underneath, isn't it? Okay, I mean, initial impressions on this is that that is a really nice nick.
chain feels like it's all attached at the bottom. Interesting, I'm slightly concerned, but the engine does turn over, I tried it. Look at that, yeah, so clean, everything's immaculate. Right, I think, oh, where's the oil? Let's do that first, where's the oil down here? Oh yeah, okay, we've got some oil. Doesn't look like it's too infected with anything either, you know. Smell that. What do you think? It smells a bit weird, doesn't it? It's almost like it's in two separate parts as well. Hmm, interesting. First thing to do, I think, is to pop a battery on it. And we will have a look at what works, what doesn't. See if the start motor goes round. See what all this looks like. See if all these valves move, all eight of them. Um, yeah, do that. I'll pull that one there. Nothing's going to happen because that battery's dead. Unfortunately, I have filmed this on a Sunday where the world famous amazing Jim Ballow is closed. So I've got no service kit for this car and I've got no new battery. Organised. Um, but I'll get those tomorrow on Monday when it opens. Um, and for now, we can attach some power to this and maybe put everything back together how it should be. And then sort of go backwards from there. I don't know. Oh my God, the lights are on. There is some juice in it. Oh, wow. Oh my God, the lights are on. How do, how do you turn them off though? Oh, side and headlights, that S and H means. Side lights are still on. Both of them work. Oh my God, we don't usually get this far this soon. Okay, they're off. Is it just me or does this look like one of the pigs off Angry Birds? Just talk those down properly. Um, and then let's attach these and we'll set this thing to, I don't know, nuclear? See if we can't get something to explode. We're on. But also, not only are we on, I've just noticed the brakes are full of liquid. Please let there be brakes. Please, God. So I've got dash lights, rear demisters on. Turn that off. Oh. Hmm. Seems like it's turning over, but it doesn't particularly want to. I'm just looking at the bat smoking, but I'm also just looking at the valves inside there, seeing what's moving. Nice. Okay, so that was a full cycle over and it seems that everything is moving as it should do in there. However, we're not flying over, so that could be a couple of things. That could be this whole setup, but I don't really think that's the case. It could be that the earth, which I'm just looking at here, is shot, but again, that looks pretty solid. A bit warm around the cable though. Maybe a new earth cable could help. Power going to the start motor looks in good nick. Where's the engine? 
metal strap, is that it there? No, that's clutch. Oh, um, you can see the pipes for the hydro suspension there, which is cool. Where's the engine bay uh, earth strap? Ah, found you. I mean, I've seen worse, but it isn't brilliant. So what we could have is a pretty knackered start motor, a start motor that's just a little bit sad and lazy, but let's just turn that down before that battery explodes. Um, so yeah, we might have to put a start motor on it as well. I'm gonna get one ordered just in case, and it looks like a quite a quick job, you know? Um, right, I think I would like to fit all this back together. Which way around does it go? Probably like that. This gasket looks like it's going to leak at a hell of a pace. What are you doing? Go in the holes. What is happening here? We'll ignore that. Uh, right, what size are you? This one? Yep, that's a good guess. Alright, that was easy. Ow! Ah, I think. Ah, ha, ha. That's where the um, thingy sits. So it's obviously been taken off, so that can be lifted up. So I can just bolt that back on there because I've seen a couple of bolts lying around. It's all coming together, man. This is easy. Why doesn't everybody do this? Just looking at the sort of brake bits down there as well. And the pipes look in pretty good condition. I say pretty good condition, really good condition. Excited to know what this thing looks like underneath though. Yeah, that's on there, kind of. Right, let's connect these vac lines back up. Ah. Nice, okay, pretty straightforward. What about this thing? Just put sort of one bolt in there for now because I'm about to take it off to get inside this distributor cap. And I can just see that the VAC advance line has completely rotted away, which is nicht cool. It's intriguing, isn't it, really? So the car was sat for 30 odd years in this garage behind a locked door, yet there's a distributor there and there's a fuel pump in the passenger side seat. Now, I don't know if before it got to my hands, it was messed about when they tried to get it running or something but it is interesting that there's also like a different uh, HT lead and stuff on there it just looks a little bit sus you know so um, well I think we're just gonna have to go through it all bit by bit and I want to check if it's sparking now the engines not rotating very quickly so that could be a little bit of an issue to sort of uh, be able to do that um, but in my experience that is enough of a, of a rotation to sort of see a spark or to even start a car if you look back at the ambassador video I think um, no the Cavalier video it was the Cavalier video doing sort of like whoom, 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 and it fired so you know it is possible um, but I want to check if there's a spark and there's a couple of ways you can do this you can get one of those fancy things that you put in between these or you can put that against a bit of metal or you can get another spark plug and check that against a bit of metal all that good stuff but another way you can do it is by pouring a load of petrol into your carburettors carburettors because i've got two of them um and seeing if it barks off so let's do that <laughs> Rotating much quicker though, which is nice. <sighs> no bark and some funny noises. Interesting. Right, I'm going to get a spark plug and we'll do it the other way. But you'll have to tell me because I'm not going to be able to see, am I? 
and because there's a distributor there I am intrigued to know if the timing's going to be well out of whack and all this sort of stuff so you have a look at this spark plug and tell me if it sparks okay I couldn't see a spark. Let's do it the old school way. I did not get electrocuted then. I do feel like the start moment might have just given up. So that looks like brand new inside there. That is, I would say, brand new. It doesn't look like it's had any use. Rotation arm, the arm of rotation, again. Really good nick. Just give that a little wire brush. Although that is pretty gunky. Yeah, bit of a wire brush on that. And we have got points, which is great. None of this Accio don't spark stuff. Um, right, let me get a little bit of sandpaper. When I order the service kit tomorrow, I will get a new set of points for it. But let's just see if we can achieve a spark. Get out of the fucking way. Like this. They just pop out. I'm not sure that should be as on the fire as it is. definitely been messed about with there's insulation tape on lots of stuff down there maybe stopping it and I moved some of the insulation tape out of the way and then it set on fire is that normal I've just increased the earthing capacity of the engine which is where the start motor earths through what happened there by adding this extra jumper cable onto this bit of metal that I've just scratched some silver on no dice right let's just use this starter motor performance improver 5000 and we'll see if that makes any difference nice 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 Oh, we're on fire again! Stop melting, everything's on fire all the bloody time! Ah. For God's sake! Can you just take that? Um, okay, so it would appear that it would appear that this has been wired in in a like I've done it you know so what I'm going to need to do is try and sort of essentially get a new set of points and then rewire that like well you know with like what do they call it um, heat shrink so it doesn't touch the other metal, which is what's happening there. Um, and then fingers crossed, we might stand a chance of getting a spark. But all of this is pretty bad. So as you can see here, I mean, 
I've, I've put on my order list new HC leads because I mean look at the nick of these things but also all this sort of wiring here um, I don't know if you can see it's probably all gone now you can see this bit a little bit better there but everything's just I don't know sort of been thrown together a little bit in there it's nicked cool so uh, a little bit of rewiring to do which is fine I'm going to order the stuff and I'll get that on uh, I'll get that on Monday or Tuesday or something. I don't know. Soon. Um, and then we can clean all this up and see if we can get a spark out of it, which would be nice, wouldn't it? And yeah, you can see the advance, back advance line there's gone, but I've got some tube and we can make something up there. Um, and yeah, all these sort of wires in here, I'm going to sort of cut into that, get a little bit further back in it. And just make a nice job of it, I think. Because a lot of it's quite old and dead. Before I disappear today, I want to check a couple of things. Okay, we're back inside. We have ignition. Oh. Just make sure that's not setting on fire. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we're inside. Nothing's setting on fire outside. I've made sure of that. Let's have a quick game of what works and what doesn't. Look at the bolts there as well. Just twelve point eight or something. Horn. Oh come on. How good? How good? What about? Do I dare try the wipers? I mean, they look okay. They don't look like they're gonna scratch the windscreen or anything. Um, indicators. Oh wow, right, okay. God, the build quality of these cars! Incredible! Uh, right, what have we got? That looks like fan speed. Hot, off, up, cold. That's, that doesn't make any sense. The clock's working! The clock's working! Okay. <laughs> what is it all? I can't believe that works and it sounds so good as well. All important cigarette lighter. What's this button for? Don't know, I've got one on the mini as well and I can't remember what that is either. That is red hot. Come on, we've got a phone charger, cigarette lighter, fog light. I think you've got to have the lights on for that. Where's the lights again? Lights are over here. Side and headlight, I think that means. So headlights. Oh my God, it looks like it works. Incredible. I think there's spaces for front fog lights as well. Although saying that, I don't know. Yeah, it could be. It could be rear fog light, front fog light, or the other way around. But there's no front fog lights in there. Um, They've just been blanked off. I don't know what that's all about. Rear demister seems to be working. Panel. Yep. Whatever. And now, the pizza resistance. Come on, baby. Oh, no. Wow. Um... I'm in, I'm in shock. I mean, we, we, well, the, the toners, the shout out to the toners, I know they'll be listening. Go on. But yeah, for like, like Mike says, nearly 15 years and they've stuck with us right through from the beginning. So yeah. we're very blessed to have such an amazing group of fans. I think what's really nice as well. My God, the sound a, quality is a, amazing. A large majority of our fan base. I can't like, um, I can't put any music on because YouTube will set fire to my garden wow that's incredible oh, god i hope the tape player worked like if i got it running properly and driving nicely this could be a great little car real nice little thing now i really need to try 
these three kings down here, just in case I need to order any parts for these. Oh, but first, hang on, I forgot. Windscreen wipers. Oh, what? I, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. Oh my God. I mean, it's a very low mileage car. It's been parked in a dark garage. There's no reason why any of this wouldn't work, but how good is that? Right, I need to put wiper blades on that list, I think. Let's start with this easy one. This is the go faster pedal. And it seems to be working. I'm so nervous about this. Please don't explode. Please don't go to the floor. I only press that lightly, but that is coming back and it does. Oh no. Okay, I'm pressing that quite hard. Oh no, I think I just heard something pop. Did I? I mean, I don't think I did. Oh my God, is that a good break? Please God. Right, what about this one? Can we make the hat trick? Oh my days. One, two, three, four, five, and then reverse. Oh my God. Right. I mean, that's gone miles better than I ever could have imagined. I really hope this engine's okay. If this engine's good, we stand a chance at getting down to Wales, you know? A chance. And that's good enough. I've got a few bits to do, a few parts to order, so I'm gonna get all that done. And for me, it'll be another day or so. For you, it'll be a few seconds. This bloody weather, where's it come from? It's like eight degrees as well. And uh, yeah, raining. Thankfully it's not raining inside here, but it is raining outside there where you are. I hope you don't get too wet. Um, look at this MR2, isn't it wonderful? This is gonna be up for sale very soon as it is, because I'm thinking it might be a bit of a better direction for the channel where I try and turn these things over a little bit quicker and don't do the full in-depth jobs that um, it just take up a lot of time and apparently nobody really wants to watch. Oh, well, quite a lot of you do, but um, I think it would be best if I stick to doing this sort of thing because I've got other things that have not been, um, the year's coming to an end and they're still sat there. Is it raining inside? Uh, but anyway, Jim Barrow have been amazing and they with all this great stuff we've got spark plugs we've got points we've got wipers we've got uh ht leads i've got new terminals for all the wiring that i'm going to do and look at this thing starter motor for a 1981 austin allegro give these guys your money man if you phoned euros and went oh can i have all this for a 1981 austin allegro they would put the phone down on you honestly um, brilliant. Right, okay. Oh, and a battery, of course. So, I need to do all that wiring. Now, it's hammering it down. It's going to make it very difficult to film. And also, I don't really want to mess this up by you guys watching me while I'm doing it, you know. So, 
what I might do is sort of in between when it stops raining and that, I'm going to run out and do it while I'm doing other things inside. And then when it's all done, we'll get back out there. Hopefully the rain might have eased off by then, who knows? Um, and we can start going through the other bits on the car. Fingers crossed, getting that all important spark. So here's your before, as you can see, lots of very, very sad melted wiring. So I'm going to get all that replaced and I'll show you after. <laughs> Please make this bad weather stop. Look at this rain coming in over the fields. It's impossible to do anything. I know being cold is a state of mind, but it is now my state of mind. I am absolutely shanking. You see like the rain coming in sideways over there. Try and sort of zoom in. And you can see in the puddle and things as well, just really, it's just coming down. There's nothing I can do about it. And like, I've sort of done, and I'm having to kneel on this bit of wet carpet. I've done the rewiring, which is nice. Um, and I've sort of put all this stuff back in and found a condenser out of the old um, thing that we found in the car. And yeah, that's all interesting. That's good. I've sort of also worked out where I'm going to route this thing as well. I just need to put a bit of pipe together on it um and yeah so new wires uh new wires everything else is pretty good um so that's all sound i'm just hoping that this little i think it's like the uh earthing bit for the condenser is okay um, i'm hoping everything else looks pretty decent now i do need to gap this um and do a few other things but i can't feel my hands anymore so i might pie it for today um, and then hopefully it'll stop raining and tomorrow will be nice and we can get that gapped put all the new HC leads on all that sort of good stuff when it's not all every, I mean, everything is just soaking wet so there's just no point me sort of doing all this really um, so we'll do all that and then fingers crossed yeah spark time and you know what that means don't you spark means brum. I don't like what have I what have I done to deserve this it's the next day and it is a lot drier which is thank god um but it's just problems and then i'm sort of looking around and realizing that it's all a little bit sketchy right so just hear me out so when i opened the bonnet previously there was this distributor sat in the bonnet right under the bonnet and i was like why is that there what's that for what's it doing you know why is it there i just you know okay whatever and then obviously this one was in the car and i mean it moves and everything which is fine but all the wiring's a little bit sketchy now i put new points in it and the i don't know if it, this, is, this is very boring i'm very sorry see this here it's like a little clip that sits in there and then this bit goes slides in and that's how it makes contact and this rubber thing is to stop that bit hitting that bit right I, sorry about the camera work. that bit hitting that bit that's what this little clear plastic thing is for because if they touch then it sets on fire which is what happened before when it set on fire was because that wasn't there that was just some somebody put a load of insulation tape or something in there and it was just Anyway, so, I've tried to put this on, and this little bastard thing, I mean this little thing, has snapped on these points, because that is a little bit too chunky. So, as I pushed it in, it just went bing, so, I mean, fuck, how am I going to reattach that to there? So I checked with Jim Bauer to see if there's any more um, points available that I can have. But yeah, what a what a pain, like, why isn't it straightforward? So, I need to just get my head stuck into that again. Um, try and maybe bodge this together somehow. Maybe drill that out and put like a little screw in there or something. I've got no idea. But yeah, it's going really well so far. How's, how's your day going? I mean, the plot thickens, you know. Every time I connect this thing up when the battery's on, when the ignition's on, just wants to set on fire. And I even went down the route of, if you can't beat them, join them. And I put a bit of insulation tape around it just to make sure that it wasn't hitting the base on the bottom. 
So, I don't know what's going on. Something's possibly shorted inside there. There might be something in it. I, I just don't know. And it's making me wonder, seeing as this bolt down here doesn't look like it's moved in a million years. So I'm wondering if this was bought to replace that because something inside there has gone wrong and it's all touching cloth inside there. So again, just not sure. Need to do a little bit more thinking. But one of the beauties of having all these cars that don't work around you, well, this one does work perfectly actually, um, yeah. <coughs> is that this is a 1500 with i think exactly the same distributor and i've had a look inside here and you can see everything's wired up perfectly and i am very very tempted to pull this thing out and put it into the car outside and just see if they're good but I really don't want to stop this thing working because I, I need it to move around, I need it to drive, but I'd have to retime it and all that sort of stuff. Bit of a pain really, and this does run exceptionally well. This would fire up now if you wanted it to. So yeah, I'm still thinking. As is usually the case, it's also pouring down in and out every now and then. Very, very frustrating. So. I don't know, don't want to strip the Triumph down and this is all looking a bit messed up. You can buy brand new sort of ready to go distributors off eBay for about 60, 70 quid. So I am tempted to sort of go down that route as well. Um, actually what I could do is I could just check the coil's not damaged, make sure the coil's putting out what it's supposed to be, because if the coil's putting out super duper volts through there it's just going to melt it anyway because it's not going to be able to cope with the with the wires yeah let me do that let me just test the coil first with a multimeter it's all starting to unravel in front of me um essentially i've got a couple of coils around the workshop that i can test to get some baseline figures off including this one here and if i try and hold the camera at the same time this old coil is saying should be saying about 1.5 there you go 1.4 1.3 1.5 just really dirty and old and i'm trying to hold this with one hand but that's what i'm getting yeah nice figure what well, a coil should be across these two bits and then over here to the one that's actually on the car as you can potentially see if i can get it in focus is just cream crackered not having it at all, not happy with anything that I'm doing. There you go. So, it's just two and zero. No ohms to speak of, which is a problem. And I'm hoping that's what's making it set on fire. So, um, yeah, I'm going to um, throw another coil on. I'm probably going to take the one off the Spitfire because Jim Bauer is sending me a new coil up now. And then we'll try it all again. Uh, interesting, I'm just about to start putting another coil on it and sort of redoing that and doing all these pipes for electricity and stuff. I've just noticed over here it says POS, which is quite fitting, isn't it? There's a little bit of a piece of shit. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a time lapse of me doing all this electrical things because you're probably sick of me talking about it. And um, keep your fingers crossed that what I'm actually doing is going to work. Um, and then at the end of it, we might be able to hear it go whom. But we we'll have to change that start motor first as well. It's quite a bit to do, isn't there? This one road to take It's growing up over with green So easy to drive on But not what it seems The poison is spilling upstream And it's taking out Every little
stubborn cuts who just covers these words Could you listen to somebody else? Well, you only drink from the thoughts of yourself Are you under the canopy spell? You dig in your heels and spread the disease I do get the feeling that God might be potentially punishing me for trying to put another Allegro back on the road. Sorry, Vanden Pla, back on the road. But yeah, I took the start motor out. You can see how it looks like a normal starter motor. And this is the one that Jim Barrow sent me. But to be fair to him, he hasn't got books for this thing because it's so old. But I don't know what sort of mad... Um, is it some is this a sex toy uh so that's gonna have to go back to them i've messaged them to see if we can get one of those in the meantime i might strip that down try and clean it up or something make it run a bit quicker i'm still waiting for the coil waiting for the uh new points fit the spark plugs bit of a waiting game this one isn't it but yeah i think definitely being punished for putting another one of these back on the road but we'll do it you know it just takes a bit of time doesn't it the situation is now that this is the old start motor which is now going back together um, after I took it apart, blew everything out, tried to sort of give it a bit of a wire brush in places, load of WD-40 um, and now I'm going to put it back on the car and see if that's made any difference, which of course it won't have. Um, I can't get another start motor like soon they're available on on the internet god knows how long that's going to take they could be anywhere the sun is being replaced by night time and uh put the start motor back in see if that's made any difference our survey says <laughs> absolutely none whatsoever it is still turning over though um <laughs> right all i've achieved today is changing spark plugs and ht leads what's that all about still waiting for the parts they haven't turned up yet it's getting on for half five six o'clock so um i'm going to start packing everything up and then hopefully those parts will arrive we'll be able to sort the distributor out swap that over and then hopefully we'll make it run off that start motor. At least if I can see if there's a spark, we could maybe pull start it or something like that, you know. I'm going to have a look tonight on the internet to see if there is any availability of start motors anywhere and other things and how quickly they could get here. And this is going to run potentially into next week. My uncle's birthday was yesterday. I don't mind too much that it's been four days because I've been quite busy doing some stuff like I went to the NEC and things and doing some Pallard related activities which you've already seen because you're in the past. No, I'm in the past. You're in the future. Um, so, please, God, after replacing all of this stuff, will you give us a spark? We've replaced spark plugs, HT leads, coil, distributor, body, main distributor, distributor cap, rotor arm, condenser, points, what else? Oh yeah, the coil, loads of wiring, <laughs> anything else needs to be... Right, I'm going to turn the key and I'm going to come back and I'm going to look for fire, okay? Okay, ignition's on. Ignition's on and nothing's getting hot. That's exciting. Right, okay. I bought a little bit of kit when I went to the NEC, Classic Car Show. There was lots of parts stuff there. Um, and one of the things I bought was this little 
spark tester so i need you to keep your eye on that for me okay now hopefully you can see it there tell me if you can see a spark did you see one i need this start motor to come to the party I can see no spark. Why? Everything. Everything's wired up okay, isn't it? I'm sure. Let's get my multimeter. So just because I've never used that bit of equipment before and I don't know if the bulb's got in it or anything, I'm just going to do the old fashioned and see if we've got anything. Where's the key in my hand? Oh, no spark. Right, let me do some research for the multimeter. Why is all my new stuff on fire? What is going on? I've, uh, what? How can I? It's all coming out of the distributor. What the hell? Oh, the ignition's off, isn't it? Something's badly effed up on this machine. Well, don't tell me that's all melted now. Okay, now for several annoying reasons, I've got another coil, uh, sorry, I've got another distributor for it. Um, just eBay and then you go to a car show and you see one for sale. Anyway, so um, I don't know if this distribute is any good or if there's a short somewhere or anything like that it all looks really nice but again who knows there's an earth strap down there which again looks fantastic i've got brilliant continuity continuity on it um and i just can't figure out what else is wrong what might be the case is that the engine's turning over so slowly the gap in the points is like staying open or something for too long and it's grounding itself out for too long through the thing without a break and I don't really know but what I can do is attach the wire to this one and spin it quickly like this and watch for a spark in there while I'm doing it and if that's got a spark in there then I'll know that potentially we've just got to um, obviously I've got to ground this as well by the way I'm gonna do that with some jumper cables but we've got a potential issue with um, the engine not turning over fast enough or something like that. So anyway, let's have a go. Okay. Yeah, I've got a spark, but it is, it's heating up again. Very brief spark, but it did heat up. Any ideas? Could you comment them below and then I'll read them afterwards after I've probably figured it out and go oh, I should have done that to start with so th the problem isn't with the ground problems potentially I mean the coils brand new I've tried it with the other coil as well what else could it be alternator wiring because that's where it draws the power from through, through the uh, for the coil Something's wrong with the coil wiring. Everything going to the coil. I didn't bother checking the ohms on the new coil when I put that in because I just assumed it'd work. You know what they say about assuming, don't they? It makes an ass out of me and you, or something. Um, so I'm going to pull these wires off, see what they do, and then put them back because I think you should only really have a positive and a negative, you know? And the negative goes down through there and, you know make sparks so let's see what these wires are doing 12.65 volts at the v8 tool res 
And we've got a good ground on here, so we'll continue to use that. And let's test what this wire is doing. I don't even know where this wire comes from. Right, so that's 12 and a half volts coming from this wire. And that's the negative side. Are we feeding the negative side of 12 and a half volts? Right, okay. What's this one doing? Twelve and a half volts. What's make it in there? What's this one doing? Nothing. Okay, interesting. What the hell? What is that? Why is there a wire connecting both sides of the coil? That's a new one on me. I've not seen that before. What the hell is that for? The more you look at this car, honestly, there's all sorts of things have been going on. Why didn't I spot that? Uh, right, okay, so what have we got? We've got, where's that 12 volts gone? That was this one, wasn't it? Right, it's actually 12 and a half, 12 volts. Hook that up. And then, I can't believe it. If that's, if that's that, honestly, I'll be so mad. Uh, right, let's just check some ohms. I don't know if that coil's now buggered because it got hot. So where's my negative cable again? I've got a good spark at those points and so far nothing's setting on fire. God for fuck's sake. If this is the problem honestly that we just... that there. Why was that even on there? Is someone playing a trick on me? They knew I was going to try and get this car working and they've just messed it all up. I should have spotted that straight away but I, I just assumed it might have been like another resistance wire or just some sort of... But I couldn't see where it was going because I just had to strip a load of loom. Do I sound like I'm making a lot of excuses? Who am I trying to convince? You or me? Right, okay. Um, I might have to swap these coils and then we'll try it again. Right then, let's test for this spark. Oh God, please. I need to get this thing running so badly. Oh my God, we've got a spark. Oh my God, after all of that. Why, why was it just that simple in the end? But everything is, isn't it? If you get to the end of a problem and you fix that problem, usually the fix is quite simple and you go, why was that so fixed? But you have to go down, because I've never seen that before in my life. I've never seen someone just connected, but it's ridiculous. Like a booby trap. But you have to go through a series of things. You don't get spark. You don't immediately go, oh, maybe the coil's wired, wired in wrong. You do the other normal stuff that normally breaks. Anyway, done it now, and we've got spark, which is exciting this late on in the video. So, uh, should we chuck some fuel down it and see if it'll make any kind of noise whatsoever? We're connected up. I hope that start motor just gives us enough, but I guess we're gonna have to find out.
nothing so far. Nothing again. Concerned I might take the fuel pipe off the carbs just in case it's trying to pump any crap in through the uh, fuel tank. This thing has obviously been messed about with by several people and they've not been able to get it running. During that time, there is a chance they could have messed the timing up. Now, I've only put everything back in where it came out, assuming that it hadn't been out before and the timing would be okay. I've not even heard a cough there or a splutter. I'm gonna check it for spark again, make sure that we're still getting spark. If we are, might have to check the timing. I'm happy the firing order's right, providing the dizzy isn't in 180 wrong, if that makes any sense. Interesting, okay. So, sit rep is, is that I'm having to use a little bit of spray fuel <laughs> um, because the, my, all my petrol is in the NEC in Birmingham. The tank that I use is in the Panard, so pain. Right, so what I need to do is I need to get to the petrol station, get some more petrol in the can, attach it to this set up here of these twin SUs via my Holly pump and then uh, hopefully that'll help us and at least we know that it's not just because I'm just chucking a bit of brake clean down there you know. Okay so to give this thing a better chance of actually firing I've hooked up this rudimental uh, fuel system with my little Holly carb and now we're going to try and fill and obviously the fuel goes into I'll just get a bit straighter. Yep, lovely. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, and the fuel goes into these two machines here. Now I have checked and they're both. There's a little piston inside each one and if you push it up and it falls back down nice and gracefully and there's quite a bit of resistance and stuff there, then all is well inside the carb, pretty much. Well, that one is... Right, uh, let's just see if there's any hissing noises. Ah, there we go. We've got movement on a piston. And dropping very gently. Okay, so let's attach this fuel. Whoa! Good Lord, is that the overflows on both carbs? Just pouring fuel out. <laughs> uh, not ideal. That's a, that's a really low pressure fuel pump. That's only gonna be as powerful as the um, normal car fuel pump. So why it's overflowing, I don't know. Possibly sticky balls. Um, so let's give them a little love tap and we'll try again. Now this is the very small carburetor hammer. Got a large selection of hammers. Good grief, what's that down there as well? Oh, it's just running down that pipe. <coughs> cool. Ah, stop. Okay, well, we'll see if that frees up on its own. If not, we'll have to do loads more work. All I want in life though is to hear this thing cough or splutter 
or do anything, you know. Didn't sound like a, possibly a tiny little fire there. Don't know if you heard it, just went whoop, possibly. I'm not getting excited, okay? But possibly. As I'm just waiting for this thing to unflood itself, you can see one of the overflows has now stopped overflowing. Ah, get off, stop it. Pour in petrol everywhere. So it's just this one now, so a few more low taps on this one and hopefully it'll come to the party. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to look at this timing then, aren't I? No, no, no problems, only opportunities. Um, I've just pulled number one spark plug out to check to see um, top dead centre. And that's what it looks like. What's all that stuff on it? <laughs> so maybe it's not firing because it's full of crap. I don't know. Um, Interesting. I'm going to check all the other spark plugs as well as top dead centre. I've just got cylinder one to top dead centre and while I've been turning the engine over I have noticed that the alternator is stuck which could explain why the start motor is having such a time trying to turn over because it's very hard to spin over on the crank. So I'm going to try and free that up as well which is a bit of a pain so I'm going to get a socket and a nut on that and try and break it free as well. Right, come on, move. Right, that's just tightening the bolt. But this is just going to loosen it. Oh, yep, that's just loosening the bolt. Fuck's sake. Ah, come on. Okay, right. So the alternator's stuck, and it's also, the day is dragging on, but what I'd like to do, now that I know that, is just to pull the tension off the alternator down there and take the belt off, because then we don't need the alternator to run, and it should help the engine spin over a bit quicker. Semi-exciting news. So, the timing's all correct, as far as I can see, without going into this plate down here and checking like the chain and all that sort of stuff. Um, top dead centers there, it was actually right. Um, so great. All the spark plugs were a little bit sort of dirty, but showed no signs of them firing at all, apart from this little cherub here on number three cylinder. How cool. So you can see the blackness there is caused by ignition so we are firing i think this is just going to be a good old this is what start motors are made for and we're just going to keep cranking and i think she's going to go i'm ready to crank this biatch and i've even gone so far as to stick a vacuum advance on it um bugger finding out where that went but yeah done it so that's on um, and we're ready to get cranking and periodically I'll give this a little twist but I think that's roughly where it should be you know um, so we should get some firing oh and the other SU has started to play ball and the uh, float has floated up to the top and now I can leave this plugged in without fuel pouring out the side pure success Right, come on baby, chokes all the way out. 
Let's hear you sing. <laughs> was something, 100% that was something. Let's give that start motor a minute or so. Oh, it's trying to fire for the crap in these sun as I pull the spark plugs out again soon. Have another look. Spraying that down there, I'm hoping is going to help um, get rid of any fuel sitting in there just in case the spark plugs are all wet. <laughs> I wish that star motor was a bit more up to the job. So we have signs that that one has not fired yet. Bloody hell, I was only checking for a spark then, but can you... Now there's less compression there, you can feel it trying to go and it did burp a couple of times then. Put that back in because there's a really good spark there and I'm hoping that it'll help it once the timing's in the right place because I think that's what the issue is. But until I can get it to run in some way, I don't know. I've just got to keep going backwards and forwards until I find the sweet spot. <laughs> Come on, baby. God, look how close it was. This thing's going to go, I'm promising you. Yep, you can see this one still consistently firing away, doing a good job. Although well, looking a bit black. I don't know if you can see now in this light, but this one's looking a bit wet and a bit sorry for itself, so quick clean up there. Didn't look like it had been firing though. Right, come on. Not celebrating just yet, come on. Come on! <laughs> oh, fucking hell. All agro or bandum pla. Our Lord and Saviour, JC, is smiling down upon us tonight. Jeremy Clarkson, of course. I want to hear it run again. Let's just do it again. I need to get it to idle so I can mess about with the distributor. Maybe I should do this tomorrow.
I'm really happy. Can you tell? Oh, so let me think because I can remember this for tomorrow. Um, timing sounds like it's a little bit off, but it's revving too high because the choke's stuck. I can't get the choke all the way home, so the choke's pulling itself back out. Um, so I need to. Yeah, I need to re root the choke tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, we've got to put water in it, make sure there's water in it before we run it up again. Do some other bits, and then we'll get it all timed up nicely. Maybe get a flashlight on it, you know, a strobe on it. But it's where it's supposed to be. Um, could do that now, couldn't we? In the dark, that'd be a lot easier. But maybe we'll just pull it inside to do it instead. If it moves. We haven't got that far yet, have we? Right, I need to tidy up and I'll see you again in a few seconds. And for me, probably nine hours. The weather's very changeable here, isn't it? It's quite a sort of damp, drizzly day, but I think we are in danger of the sun coming out at some point. Um, but I couldn't be happier. Last night, this thing ran. I God, it sounded great. Really, really did. But today, I need to find out whether or not this thing will move under its own steam, under its own power, for the first time in 32 years. I mean, many have tried. We saw inside the engine bay, you know, there was a lot of uh, stuff in there, a lot of evidence that people have been there messing about with things. But we've done it. We've got her running. I wonder if she'll start now, sort of... Uh, without the jump pack and stuff on her. But we'll find out in a second. Because what I'd like to do is see if it moves. And if it does, get it in front of the workshop, jet washer, make her a bit nicer and cleaner than she is, and then park her inside. Because I've not got too long today. So it'd be good to sit in there drying off for the next couple of days while I go and pick the panard back up from the NEC. And then when I get back, we can get stuck into stuff like tires, suspension, brakes, fuel, interior cleaning polishing all that good stuff fitting those cool hubcaps god if that isn't the smoothest quietest little engine you've ever seen so while this thing's warming up Let's get some antifreeze in there, you know. See if she starts sucking on that. Go and top this up with water. It's interesting, isn't it? It took three different hammers to get this car running. <laughs> Cross all your extremities. Let's see if this thing moves. Clutch pedal's there. First gear is engaged. Oh dear, that was clutch slip. Oh. That was the clutch being a bit violent. Now obviously we are on the deck so it's going to find it quite hard. Come on! She moves and she feels good. We've got to get her off the deck though, but I've got a pump on its way. So pleased with that, absolutely amazing. What's it doing for temperature? Temperature gauge was just on the bottom. There's a lot of bubbles coming up in the expansion tank there. That's fine. We're not like really pressurized anywhere. Radiator's still stone cold though. Just hoping this thermostat opens. Ah, looks like there's a little bit of a breather thing there. Let me just get a socket on that, see if I can knock some air out of it. 
I'd like to see some air, uh, some water flow under here if this is going to be possible. I can see steam. Okay, so there is water in there, that's a good sign. Just see if I can see any flow. I can see the thermostat in there. Interesting, I wonder if uh, the thermostat's going to be stuck or not. It looked okay in there, didn't it? It looked too bad. It's annoyingly very cold. Still no flow through the radiator. La yeah, stone cold down there, this pipe. I don't think the uh, thermostat's opening. Let me just switch her off, have a little mess about with that, and then we'll try again. This thermostat doesn't look all that great, does it? <laughs> What's all this? Crystals, magic spells. I mean, it's free, but it just doesn't seem to work. Is this going to be another ambassador thing where everything's clogged up to the nines? I hope not. I mean, it's all pretty gruesome in there, isn't it? I'm going to give it a wipe out, maybe a little flush would be in order while I'm out here with the hose. I'd like to get the heater matrix all freed up as well, which is these two pipes here, because they do feel... Well, that one's pretty gammy. Let's just see what happens, I suppose. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Can you see the colour? It's warm as well. Yeah, okay, come on. There you go, it's starting to come through there now which is nice. So it'll go through there, round there, through the heater matrix as well hopefully, um, via this pipe here, and then it'll go through the radiator and out here. And I mean, it's not the worst we've ever seen. The Ambassador was worse, wasn't it? But, and it seems like we have got flow, so fingers crossed. Yeah, you can see it from the overflow tank there, look, coming out. So the overflow tank has got three channels go into it. Put that back on without the thermostat. Fill it full of lovely nice stuff first. A bit of an idiot. I have just realised that um, I was I was checking. I was thinking, God, everything's still cold. Nothing's getting hot. It's because I took the bloody belt off, didn't I? Because the alternator's stuck, so the water pump is not spinning round as it should. Stupid. So I'm going to have to free this alternator, put the belt back on, and then we'll have a water pump again. Bloody hell! Come on, amateur hour. Handy that they've got these fins on the side, isn't it? You can smash your crowbar off them. Okay, that's actually freed off pretty easily and the belt's back on. Will it explode? Or will it charge? Look at that! Absolutely brilliant! Not a, not a squeak out of it, is it charging? <laughs> it is charging! 
just over 12 volts and the radiator is filling up with nice hot water. Fantastic news, what a result. Okay, that's ticking over very nicely and I'm going to leave it running while I check to see if stuff like the fan comes on and stuff like that, you know, and the heaters get hot in the car. Um, but it seems to be ticking away really nicely. I'm going to pressure washer it, pressure washer it now um, and try and make it a bit nicer for when it comes inside. While I'm doing that though, I'm going to cue the music and I'd like to introduce you to the latest along the side of here, Patreon Airs. Now, Patreon's super important for me because without it, I can't afford screwdrivers or plus gas. And I need these because I go through them at a hell of a rate. So uh, if you're feeling a bit flush and you're enjoying this, you must be mad, but if you are enjoying this um, and my other videos, then just sort of get on there, drop us a few quid. And if you can't, don't worry about it. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Just watch the video. All helps, doesn't it? But if you can spare a few quid, the Patreon would be really, really great. The link is in the description of the video, so go and click on that, click on the link, and it'll take you straight there. Um, and I put exclusive content out on there as well, like when I go and pick cars up and do all that sort of stuff. A little bit of behind the scenes, if you like. Um, so yeah, cool, all right. Um, cue the music. She's washed, it's raining, let's get her inside. In the eyes of that Vanden Plas. She is happy to be moving again, but does not want to roll. But obviously the suspension's all the way up, brakes are probably seized on. Um, anyway, let's spatchcock this chicken. How good. We've got inside, in the dry, finally, this Austin Vanden Plas. 
and I'm just going to let it dry out in my newly cleared garage. Video on that coming very soon. Keep saying that every time, don't I? But yeah, let's let this thing dry out. Look how clean this engine bay is. Unreal scenes. So yeah, that's going to do me for today. Because tonight I'm taking my girlfriend out for a lovely meal, which is nice, isn't it? Uh, so I need to go home and get out of these sopping wet, very dirty clothes. Um, I've got some parts on the way. Hopefully they'll be here by Tuesday, which is going to be my next big full day on this thing where we're going to do its real transformation. And then fingers crossed, Wednesday or Thursday, we're ready to drive down to Paddington Know which I'm really looking forward to, seeing if this thing can stand the motorway, you know. The engine seems nice though, nothing overheated, nothing blew up. We'll see. See you in three seconds. Couple of jobs successfully completed on the Allegro this morning, including giving the interior a nice wipe down and a hoover and all that sort of stuff. Giving the windows a quick wipe down and God, it looks good in here. Really good. Still needs a couple of bits going down, but that's something that the next owner can get their uh, teeth into. Easiest fix ever, just two washers. And now that's back on. And Aled's come down because we're looking at a noise in his van, and we're going to have a go together at pumping the suspension up. Fingers crossed. So, oh, fuck. Bonnet really found me. Down there, you've got a little shred of valve. So, that connects to that valve once you've filled that cylinder up with coolant or special source whatever you want to use there is specific stuff you can buy but that'll do the job um and yeah you're potentially looking at a good couple of hours of pumping to get this thing to rise providing which is why, I'm here. <laughs> which is why I'm here, providing there's no leaks <laughs> unsuccessful uh, we got to about 400 psi on this side and then she blew a leak if you can see it there oh. and we got to next to nothing on the other side and it blew a leak there as well so a bit disappointing but we're going to get this thing up on the ramp now and have a look at these leaks and see if they are going to be in any way shape or form repairable First time getting this thing in the air. Um, just from a quick glance, looks okay underneath. Um, let's have a quick look, see if we can find out where this thing's leaking. Right, so frontwards, look at that oil filter. Good God, gonna need to put a replacement one of those on. Absolutely hacking. All oh, this is very good nick though, isn't it? But, but you know, a bit surface rust, but that is all very, very solid including the chassis and stuff there really good solid bit of kit all looks good inside there as well now oh, that brake is a little bit seized on not the worst i've ever seen oh properly seized on oh, again not too bad 
<laughs> properly seized on. Right, and again, this weird balance, a, little, a few little crusty patches, but I've seen loads worse. Toe and iron, everything's in good shape. Sills are covered by this plastic thing, but you know, all that in there, look at it. Still got the original paint on it. It's pretty smart, you know, not bad. Not bad at all. Bit of crustiness there, but again, that's only flaking stuff. It's all very solid. Underneath it, floor, really good. It's all up on its jacking points as well. Yeah, chassis there, not bad. Exhaust looking okay. Gearbox doesn't look too leaky or anything. And again, inside floor, look at it. Really nice, Nick. Really good. Oh, got a bit of a hole starting there, but not too bad at all. But this arch. Yeah, man, look at it. It's solid as a rock. All the important bits. If you're a hydro pipe, where would you go? So you go from the Schrader valve, all the way along here, looking a bit crusty, looking a bit crusty, looking a bit crusty, and we're wet here. Right, so I think, you just peel that back. Oh, just get a wire brush. Whoa! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, but there's 400 PSI of coolant pissing out of that thing. <laughs> Good grief, so we've ha we've got a pinhole leak in there. How do we stop it? I don't think we can, can we? <laughs> let it drain out. We have to put a load of coolant everywhere. Can't even, it's just, it's almost a gas. <laughs> um, okay. Right. We'll just let all that out there. So yeah, this big pipe here wants replacing under serious pressure as well. So it's, I don't think it's a case of just putting a bit of rubber pipe around it. I don't think that would hold the pressure. You have to take it off there and replace it all the way down towards the Schrader valve, which is a big old long pipe. I don't even think, are these available? Can you buy these things? Just goes up to that Schrader valve block. Right, okay, this side. So we're coming down from there, long here, and then it stops. Outrageous. Okay, right, so that's obviously supposed to. Oh, wow. Looks like this has been caught on a trailer or something at some point. And I've just cable tied that up there. Ah, oh, right, okay, so yeah, lots of splits in that. Someone's tried to just do a, comp looks like a bit of copper pipe with some compression fittings onto that there. Hey, maybe we could do that. And then it goes up to this pipe. You can see it's whole, you know, the empty bit there. Up to that bit there. Throwing a couple of challenges my way, this car. Um, so let me, tell you where I'm up to with this now. So I've got this thing disconnected here with loads of heat and plus gas and stuff. So that's off there. And I've managed to see what connection it is that I need. And I mean, you know, we're doing all this now. I don't even know if the cylinders are the, you know, the, the globes or whatever you want to call them are good. But that's the pipe that I just took off from that connection there. And you can see it's just essentially like a big brake pipe. It's like a big 10 mil, I think that is brake pipe. So uh, yeah, I haven't got any equipment to make those. I don't think many people have anymore. There is a couple of people on Facebook. There's one in Telford, but I can't get hold of them. Telford do specialize in hydro gas, but the phone's not working. So I've sent them an email. I'm hoping they're gonna get back to me soon. This leak here. So yeah, I would essentially have to get a new pipe made that would go up and over that axle there. I don't know how I'd do that. I'd have to, because there's not enough space to get the union 
through there, I don't think. Unless there is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there isn't. I hope you don't have to drop the axle just to get that thing through, but you might do. Um, so yeah, we'd have to put that new pipe on and then route it back down here with all of its friends. And now you could just connect it there with a compression fitting or something, but over here is really rough and it was wet. So I think that'd just leak again there. So you'd might as well go all the way through and change it at that globe, whatever it's called there. So you're looking at a full pipe, full length pipe on this side. Now this side here, everything looks in fair condition. It doesn't look too bad on that pipe, apart from this bit here that's leaked. Everything else on this side, everywhere else seems, you know, half decent. Doesn't seem too bad at all. So I could, reuse this bit of plumber's copper pipe that someone's MacGyvered over here and I love a good MacGyver so I've stripped it off the other side and I've kept the compression fittings and all that sort of stuff so we could cut this one to size there and there or whatever and fit that length of copper tubing and then at least that's one side done I've just got to worry about the other side so I'm going to have a go at that and then uh, I'm going to make some phone calls in the meantime see if I can get hold of a pipe for the other side. I might go to that place in Stoke-on-Trent see if they can make me one or something. I don't know. Okay, cool. Hey, could be worse, you know. Might have an answer. So I've cleaned the, this bit up here and this bit up here. So we're going to bridge that with a 10 mil. This is 10 mil thick pipe. 10 mil compression fitting, 10 mil compression fitting. I tried to use reuse this one, but the olives are too squished, so I can't get those on. But I could still use this bit of copper pipe, why not, eh? So I'll get some more compression fittings tomorrow from the same people, I'll flash their details up in the video, who are supplying me with a whole new length of 10 mil pipe that's going from there all the way down to round about here where we'll cut it and compression fit it on so we should have a nice pipe and they are specialists in this and they've given me a few tips on the hydro gas and told me the difference between hydro gas and hydroelastic as well which is quite interesting hydro gas uses a nitrogen gas in there and that's where your suspension does and hydroelastic is a rubber thing so there you go but um, I'm hoping we've still got nitrogen in there because then we'll have a nice suspension but we won't know until we get it pumped up I've got an hour or so left of the day though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the wheels and tyres off, put those in the back of the Discovery so I can get tyres on those in the morning. That pipe isn't going to be ready until four o'clock. I'm going to have a look at the brakes while I'm in there now. I've ordered oil and filter and stuff so we can get that done tomorrow. I think that could be it. If we can get the suspension up tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow night as well because I'm not supposed to be there till four. Get the tyres on. If I can do the brakes in the meantime, get those done in the morning, could be on for a winner. And then, yeah, hit the road Thursday morning. And then maybe get this video out to you Friday. That would be the dream, wouldn't it? It's a shame we're actually replacing those because I mean, they're in, there's nothing wrong with them, is there? <laughs> but they are extremely old and they are starting to perish. But they're holding air beautifully and the wheels are in fantastic condition. Can't find a date code on any of these, so I don't know how old they are, but you can tell they are old, old, old. So yeah, let's get them replaced. Try and make it as safe as we possibly can, eh, you know? Uh, right. Brakes, all the brake pipes and everything look in absolutely superb order. Really, really clean, so fingers crossed. I mean, the flexies, you know, could they be collapsed? I don't know, let's just sort of see how we get on as we get on. Dead spider, it's clinging on. Um, so the plan is with these, is to deconstruct it, clean it all, grease it all, reconstruct it. And I'm gonna do that all round, because they are absolutely locked solid. Can't move them at all. Back ones, again, very, very tightly locked, so might have to pull these drums off, give everything a clean and a loose and behind there as well. So a bit to do on the brakes, but you know, 
hopefully fairly straightforward stuff. Pretty interesting brakes these, they're not, uh, not quite like the ones that you'd probably have on your car. Got a couple of these little pins, uh, I mean like retaining springs, and then you've got these pins which slide through there to hold your pads in. And these are all quite rusty and crappy, but if you can see those, so I'm going to get give those a wire wheel, and then they're held in with a couple of these little R-clip type jobs. Um, and then essentially your pads are supposed to slide in and out. But they're quite stuck in there. So I'm going to try and just, pistons inside here, so I'm going to try and just tap this one back. I've just bent that brake pad, I've just peeled that brake pad off. Good God. <laughs> okay. She's stuck tight in there. Bearing and everything seems nice and free, so that's good. It was just the brakes sticking it on. But yeah, plenty of meat and stuff left on it. Okay, that's out as well. Now I can see the piston. And I wonder if we'll have any purchase to push it back on. I'd love to see this piston go in, even a touch. I don't want to have to crack the bleed nipple to get this in because then it would kind of point towards the flexies being collapsed. But let's try and avoid that because we don't want to change those because it might be an online eBay style job again. Ah. Is that moved? Can't tell. Oh, can't tell that it's so dark in here. Winter. Um, that bearing feels super nice though. So this thing here is a big slider and it's supposed to move backwards and forwards. And as you can tell, it's pretty seized solid. But it did move with a few taps though, which is pretty good. Um, there's, there's a couple of little sliders. I'm going to grease those up with this grease. And um, then I'm going to go and push the pedal a couple of times and see if I can pop that caliper out and see if we can make that caliper move. And if I can't, then maybe it. I need to start googling front plexis. Okay. I'd call that one pretty free. Right, let's see if I can push this brake pedal. Watch that caliper, see if it comes out. Oh, move then. Did you hear that? Oh, it's come out. Will it go back in? Went with a pop though, which is a bit worrying. Oh yeah, it's flying back in. Which, might, which means fluid's going that way and going that way. I get too excited. Nice, right, let's try and push it out again. Oh. 
like a Charlie Chalks running through those play, playing things. Do you ever do that when you're a kid? It's just me. Okay. Okay. So the good news is, is that caliper is moving in and out. This bearing feels really good. This flexi must be working, please God. Um, and the slider. And the slider. And the slider. The slider's working. Let's hope that this continues to do this down the road. Right, I'm gonna do the other side, do the backs. And it's dark outside now, so I'm gonna go home after that. Realistically, if I wanna get this video out to you in two days time, this is the last time I can be in the workshop with this car for a few hours. I've gotta go and pick those suspension pipes up later. Um, but I need to get all of the rest of the stuff done now. What is all the rest of the stuff? Well, the front brakes are done, the rear brakes are locked on, but I think I've got an idea I'll show you in a second. And uh, I've got to sort the fuel system out. We've got to check all the sort of levels and stuff again. Could really do with getting the timing lights on it. Um, and that might be it. Oil and filter change, thermostat back in when that arrives. A few little finishing jobs. I've also just sort of polished up a couple of little areas on the car. I don't know how well you can sort of see the difference there, just this little bit here, you know, compared to all that. And the grill there, I've just sort of polished this bit up here as opposed to this dull horridness there. It's, it's quite nice. It did look like that there before and now it looks like that. So yeah, quite nice. Would you like to see me do a bit of a tidy up on this thing? Um, in another episode. We could do another episode after this, couldn't we? Of like getting the car sort of all polished up and looking its best, maybe getting the fuel tank to work, getting a new fuel pump in that, sorting that out, plating up this rusty bit here to stop the grill moving. A few little jobs like that, you know. If you'd like to see that, let me know. You could let me know by pausing this video, jumping onto your Facebook or your Instagram, finding me there and, and giving me a follow. And if I get a load of followers, then I'll know that um, you want to see me do a little bit more on this car. Or if you'd just rather me move it on and go on to the next one, then just let me know. But I think it could deserve a bit of a tidy up. Now these rear brakes are pretty locked on. But the interesting thing is, is that being drums, the I mean, there's not huge amounts to sort of lock it on and I can't it, they're sort of pulled out a little bit from the the drum when they sat when they're sat so it shouldn't really lock on unless the handbrake's been left on now the handbrake mech is completely seized it's back here it's this thing here and it is completely seized solid and the interesting thing there sorry about it being so dark in here but yeah the interesting thing here is that the handbrake is sort of it doesn't click up at all that's its maximum there so i think all of the handbrake side of things is seized so maybe the handbrake was left on when it was parked and has seized in place so i'm going to try and free that off first so this bit here is your handbrake lever and as you can see that bit is free there's no tension on that but this thing is completely solid inside there. So I'm gonna try and hit this with a hammer several thousand times, same on this side, and see if I can free it up and maybe that will release the shoes inside there. Should try and recreate that for you there because I don't think it'd be that easy. But yeah, essentially just hammer on this lever and now the brake's free. So there you go, that was super, super easy. So if you've ever got one of these with the brakes locked on, just go behind the back and just hammer on that lever there. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's free inside here as well to move, but I think it is. Should be. Let's see about this one, see if I can do this one live. Okay, so it doesn't work. Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, maybe don't do that. This side is like brand new. This side though, did not want to play ball. So that's taken me a good sort of five to seven business days to get this 
drum off. And the shoes and everything look okay. Um, the adjuster seized solid, so I'm going to try my best to inject it with some plus gas and just sort of try and work it a bit and free it off. Don't know if the cylinder's working or not, but I think if I take some of the adjustment out of it, we're going to get it to spin. And unfortunately, the little handbrakey thing snapped. Don't know why it snapped. Surely it wasn't because I was smashing it with that about 400 times. Can't be. So yeah, I'll have to put them in a little parcel. So we're not going to have a handbrake on this wheel. But uh, yeah, everything else seems good. Bearing and everything seems really good. So it's just a case of trying to free this adjuster, pull it all in a bit, put it back on. Fire always works. You see that little thing moving around in there that's spreading the shoes? Tidy, so I've just got to get that to its sort of lowest point so we can get the drum on and hopefully have it spin and then adjust it back out again so the brakes can work. Nice, we might have lost the handbrake on this side but everything else is going to be good and we've still got the handbrake on that side. So, cool! On to the next thing! Four very spinny wheels. All torqued to the correct setting, of course. Uh, is this a Conti? Continental. Is that a Ferrari badge? Is this a Ferrari? Cool. Uh, uh, what the hell? Laufen? Laufen? Laufen. G30 EQ. Cool. Whatever the hell that is. And a radar. Look at these hubcaps. They're all on. How cool. They come up so well as well with a bit of spit and polish. I'm sure of it. As would everything else on the car, I think. Full set though. Imagine that. Annoyingly, the oil and filter hasn't arrived yet, or the thermostat, which is very sad. Um, but I'm just gonna crack on and do what I can now, which involves putting a better fuel system in there, something in the cab for the journey, because we've got, you know, quite a few miles to do. It's gonna take us a good couple of hours. And then uh, I wanna check the timing. I can see some timing marks down here and I think they're supposed to line up with this here but I need to check that. Um, I'll do a little bit of research. I'll put the air filters back on. I replaced this fuel hose yesterday as well because the other one was a little bit suspect. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thankfully the washer bottle actually goes into the cabin. Must be some sort of feature where you can wash your face while you're driving or something but I've managed to route my fuel pipe round there, round there, really close to all this hot stuff, which is good, isn't it? Pumps over there, near the power, and I've got my little fuel tank down there. Okay, Jose, we are ready for a test, so... I can see some little bubbly bits happening there, I can feel it pulsing, so let's try and fire her up to get a bit of suction in from the car. It's good, isn't it? There we go. Let's get a bit of suction in from the car. Bloody crowbars wedged in there. Uh, will it run? A little bit of choke and we are getting some fuel flow into there so I'm hoping that this is going to be a nice little fuel circuit but I guess we'll have to wait and see won't we you know till the open road that's the original fuel hose there and yeah oh how weird hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on I could feel that pulsing then almost as though it was working. 
is it worth me throwing a can of fuel in the tank and seeing if the tank works? Now imagine a world where I could get this thing running off the fuel tank. That would save a huge amount of work because if this fuel pump's working, we can find out what state the tank's in. And I've got an array of fuel filters up there that we could take with us. And if needs be, change them on the side of the road. I mean, it's worth chucking 12 quid's worth of fuel in it. Do you remember what it used to cost a fiver to fill one of these up? It's happened to the world. It wasn't even that long ago. Okay, so we're going to use this Volvic natural, natural mineral water bottle to try and catch anything that comes to the tank so we can see what sort of condition it's in. Excited. Oh my god, look at that. It is flowing with fuel. Holy smokes. Who knew that would happen? I certainly didn't. I mean, it's absolutely hanging, but there's not tons of bits at the bottom. A lot of that was just from the pipe then, I feel. That is amazing news. Right, okay. So let me stick a fuel filter in line on this pipe here, and we'll put that pipe back onto the carb. Okay, now, I mean, I've not put any clips or anything on that yet, but let's just see what happens. I mean, look at that, it looks, why did it stop working? It doesn't even look that bad, this is incredible. If this works, I don't have to put a fuel pump on it. Why, why do you keep stopping? And that is just working away. What an incredible, incredible result that is. I think this car, after all, might want to go back on the road. Also, the leaders of the world when it comes to car parts, JB's, Jim Barrows, have dropped us off all the bits I need to do an oil change and put a new thermostat in. So I'm going to get that done now, and then we might be ready to go and pick up some suspension bits, which is the last piece of the puzzle before we hit the road. It's important to get all these surfaces all nice and shiny when you're putting a new one of these on, because otherwise it'll just piss water everywhere, won't it? Common sense, eh? Um, and same, of course, with the other side. And that did take quite a while, but we got there and it's all nice, so that can go on. And that's the thermostat done. It was anyone's guess which one was the bloody drain plug, isn't it? Who knew? I've gone for this one round here because it looked like it was the lowest. Um, but yeah, who knows? It looked like it had the most oil round it. <laughs> uh, interesting. But yeah, she's going to thank me for this oil change. That's very nasty oil. Not sponsored by Napa, but I possibly should be, shouldn't I? Um, nice Napa filter gone on there. It's going to be very smart when this thing's done, isn't it? Better view of the fuel pump there as well. Yeah, should have probably checked that first and a bit more research or something, but I just don't like, don't like researching things, you know? Not my style, I like to find out, re, you know, search in the thing. It's more exciting. And take you guys along with me. Um, okay, this is nearly finished draining. Um, we'll get it full up and then Time for some suspension. I've just had the gun on it and I can't quite pick up the timing, the timing marks properly. Not the best gun in the world and this thing keeps jumping off and it's generally been a bit of a pain in the ass. I've got it to where it sounds the best. And it sounds so, so good. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for the time being can maybe do some adjustments on the road, but I haven't got time to warm it up properly and sort of do all that sort of stuff. Um, but for now, that's running really nice. It's time for me to hit the road and head to Telford. Hmm.
I don't know how well you can see because it's really dark, but the pipe is collected and I've got the compression fittings in my pocket. It's exactly what I needed. And I know you could probably get this pipe from anywhere, but the thing is, is on this one, he's done me a flare, which is not something that you could get anywhere. He's got the right bit of kit. I've got roughly an hour now before I get back to the workshop and then probably an hour or so to fit these. I'm really hoping that's going to get us on the road for the morning. I'm back from Telford and uh, God, this MR2 is good fun, you know, really, really is. Got my pipes. I'm going to lock myself inside this workshop now and get it done. You need to cross your fingers, cross your toes, all your extremities, cross them. And hopefully tomorrow morning we'll have something that can be taken on the road. So for me, probably a good nine, ten hours, but for you, a few seconds. It's very much the next day. And as you can see, we're a little bit higher than we were when I last saw you. However, it's not all sweetness and roses. We have got suspension, although this side is a bit more pressurized because we have a little issue. This sphere is not sphering. It is staying sort of down. And there's like 500 odd PSI of pressure in there. It should have pumped it up, but it's not. And that could be for a couple of reasons. There might be some air trapped in there or the spheres seized in some way, I don't know. So I'm hoping that with a bit of movement, it's gonna free up, it's gonna even itself out and it's gonna rise. I haven't really got any other options. I'm out of time. I need to get this thing on the road. Last night I was here quite late repairing these pipes. As you can see on the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side, front to back, completely replaced. And then on the right hand side, we've got two parts that have been patched and it's just your normal 10 mil sort of central heating sort of tubing fitments and all that sort of stuff. So it's fairly straightforward. It's not a very complicated system, this at all, um, but it's not working. So I'm hoping with a trundle along, I mean, it's got suspension, you know, this side's really nice. I just hope it sort of evens itself out. But as you can see, we are a little bit higher on this side because we're full of pressure. So there's a way you can deal with that. Cover your eyes. How does that look? A little bit more. What about that now? Tiny bit more, I would say. Actually thinking about it, it will pull itself down if the other side rises. So that's gonna do it for me. That's nice and measured, you know, I've had my tape measure out and everything. <laughs> right then, now on to the bigger problems. We're leaking water from somewhere and we're also leaking fuel. I had a run in for about sort of 10 minutes or so and she's just made a right old mess of everything under there. Water wise, I can't quite pinpoint it, but I think, I don't think it's water pump even though that seems to be sort of getting sprayed around. Oh God, that's gone really loose. Why is that so loose? <sighs> I've got to tighten that up as well. <laughs> um, but I think maybe it's the radiator. I don't know if you can see his little drip there. So I think the radiator has got a pinhole in it. Oh, it's something to do with that bottom hose because it's quite wet around there. <sighs> We're just going to have to sort of play that by ear, I think. I could put a bit of radiator stop leak in it. I might get some from the petrol station if we're really desperate, but we'll just see how that goes. It is a fair old bit of water though, and it's only just started. So it could get worse. And the petrol thing, God knows why, but the float of this one is stopped sort of working properly, despite my best efforts with a hammer. And the overflow is just pouring fuel out. So, yeah, not 100% sure. It doesn't do it when the engine's sort of under uh, load, if you like, or being revved. So not a huge issue, and I'm tempted to just blank it off and sort of force it back into the engine for now. Um, not a lot else I can do, I think. So I haven't got time to strip this card down and have a look, and it's not just about having the time. 
if I start messing about with the bowl and stuff in that, we are at risk that I will either break something or a gasket will start leaking or something like that. And at this late stage in the game, no good. Can't do that. I need to get on the road. So instead, I've come up with this frankly ingenious solution. We've got a pipe which goes all the way into the cabin as we were doing before and it's slowly filling up when it starts to come through this little jerry cam and then I can just empty this into the fuel tank if it gets anywhere near full which I don't think it will because it's only doing this on idle and we're not going to be idling that much God, I'm so clever I've tightened up the alternator belt so that seems to be doing the trick But yeah, we are dripping down there, and I think it's coming from the water pump. It's dripping onto that pulley. Ah, what a problem. What a problem. You know, I think we might have two leaks. We've got one there, and this one on the... water pump right we're just gonna have to let that develop i think water's coming out of that radiator pretty quickly which is pretty sad why did that have to start now um right so i filled the car up with almost everything i own tool wise and uh yeah <laughs> let's hit the road i now know how Christopher Columbus must have felt when he set sail to try and find a new world. Except my ship is probably a little bit more janky than his. <laughs> not, a, not a problem though, is it? First stop is the nearest petrol station. Let's see if it just gets there. That'd be good, wouldn't it, you know? Seatbelt's a little bit, a little bit mouldy. Am I gonna catch another? Solid dose of spider bifida. I hope not. Right, okay. So, is the battery charging? Yes, it is just. Let's hit the road. I'm driving my Vanden Plas. It's a bit bumpy on the back. Brakes work. Probably should have checked that first, shouldn't I? Okay. Third gear. God, this thing's fast. Why is it doing that? Accelerate. Oh, God, we've barely made it down the road. Come on. What's happening? I'm doing twenty five mile an hour on this sixty stretch. Come on, what's wrong with you? Oh, there's a lorry trying to pass me now. Oh God, he's nearly crashed into another car. Oh my God. Am I causing accidents? Right, I'm gonna pull over here. What's going on? I've just pulled my little hose doohickey thing off. Started running on three all of a sudden. Or two.
So, I think we've got a fueling issue, and I can't, I can get it just to run off. The, uh, <laughs> oh, super. even though we're only doing three mile an hour, hazards work. So we're getting to run a little bit better with the full-on choke out, but I think it's just not going to fuel through. So we need to get to the petrol station and put some fresh juice in it. But we are going up quite a steep hill here and it doesn't like it. Juice her up, find a quiet spot, get to work. I've just found a quiet little side street. When I was leaving the petrol station then, I spotted something else leaking from underneath the car. What's that gonna be? I've got a very slow drip from the fuel tank which is a little bit spewing we are still dripping from the rad so i'm going to attempt through there to put this rad seal stuff and see what happens now i think we're not getting enough fuel but i'm not sure so what i want you to do is keep your eye on that fuel filter and see if anything comes through <laughs> I feel like that fuel filter should be full and bubbling and full of life, and it's not. Which is, well, why not? I was just getting ready to put this thing on. As you can tell by the way that there's fuel everywhere, um, I tested it with uh, it not being attached to the carbs, and it was pouring fuel out. So I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like uh, we've got a problem inside the carbs and we're just not getting juice. Excuse the squealing of that, but it's now running fine. Very, very frustrating. Must be something clogged up inside there, a bit of crap. But let's uh, try and make it down the road. If you can't beat them, join them. In she goes. Oh, doesn't it look nice? How far down the road will she go? Where we'll stop? Nobody knows. <laughs> Fan belt's a bit annoying, isn't it? I have just tried to tighten it, but it's not taking the gifts. Hopefully it'll stop soon because everybody's looking at me. We're in third gear and we it feels as though we're running on four cylinders ish. I got to stop and do something about that fan belt if it doesn't quiet down. Thirty mile an hour. This is the fastest this car's been. In a minute. Oh, fan belt stopped squeaking. Come on, it's fixing itself. Yeah, in a very long time. Right, we're going right out of here. Come on, baby, you can do this. I properly believe in you, you know. This is a 60 zone. Slow and steady wins the race. 
crazy but this thing is running and driving and it feels really nice suspension wise bushes wise it feels like a 48,000 mile car which it is I just need that engine to sort of play ball with these calves steering feels great brakes feel good It's got a bit of acceleration to it as well. 31, 32 years, this thing was sat in a garage. People tried to get it going, they couldn't do it. And here she is sailing down the road. We're in traffic. We're just keeping up with traffic. This is just like a real car, like a normal car, except it looks so weird. You know, Allegro's getting to that point now where they're, for me, Personally, it, it's cool because it's so ugly and weird. It's so bad it's good. Does that make sense? I mean, what a thing to behold. And I'm telling you what, super comfy. This is the comfiest I think I've ever been in a car. Seats are amazing. Might put these seats in the Discovery. of a sudden she's driving like she's never been off the road it's got a bit of an exhaust leak as well but it's driving so so well honestly right can you see any drips i can see one in the middle there don't know what that's from but i cannot see any water drips have we fixed it with stop leak well who bloody knew but it is now dry. We've got a tiny little drip. That was the first drip I've seen. You can see all the stuff that's come out. It is sealing it up. It is working. Absolutely incredible stuff. We might be on for a winner here. I just want to take, I just want to get maybe a little bit of time in, take some idle off the carbs. And then uh, I think we can just Stick it on the motorway, you know? Just had a bit of a catastrophic sense of humour failure from the all aggro nicht cool oh what a mess oh what's happened oh we've got a burst pipe oh, oh no very sad yeah We've got a burst heater matrix pipe. Good God. And this thing was just squealing its head off still. Really, really annoying. I'm going to try and tighten that a little bit more and think if there's anything that I could do with that.
Look at this lovely canal that we've broken down next to. It could be worse, couldn't it? So I've got an idea. I've tightened up the alternator as much as I can, safely, I think. So hopefully that'll stop it squealing and might make the water pump turn a bit better as well. A couple of things. We've not heard this electric fan kick in for this radiator yet. I do have some gear with me so that I can hardwire, if it works, this electric fan permanently on. So fingers crossed it does work. And then this pipe is only for the heater matrix. If I can take it off here, spin it round, put it back on and clamp the other end, and then clamp this one as well so nothing goes through, maybe we might stand a chance. Okay, so we've MacGyred a couple of little connections onto there and praise the Lord, we are sucking some air. So that's really good news. If I can sort that, put it full of water, who knows, we might stand a chance. If this works, I'll be amazed. I don't know about you guys. What I've managed to do is pull this pipe out a bit and push that one on a bit further and cut the burst bit off. So there's not a lot of flex left in that, but I'm hoping it's gonna be watertight. I'm gonna fill this thing full of water again Fire her up, put the fan on, see if I've got some circulation. Let's find out. That's where all the last water went. Cool, okay. I guess all we can do now is try and make it a bit further. I'm going to pull up again down the road and we'll just have another look under the bonnet and see what's going on but fingers crossed that works keep your fingers crossed for me we are motoring along like nobody's business and we're almost crossing the border into wales pushing her a little bit hard and maybe I shouldn't be. I'm going to ease off a bit. I've just pulled up down the road a bit after that quite energetic motorway stint and there is nothing leaking on the floor. Which is a bit of a win, isn't it? Pipes, you know, aren't crazily pressurised or anything. I'd like to get more water into it really. I don't know if it's got enough water in it, but I, I can't get it in because it doesn't want to suck it through the expansion tank, even though that is definitely free. And taking that off to put water in is a bit of a pain. So, I mean, I think we're just gonna have to sort of carry on as we are. Should have filled it up when it was cold, really. The fuel filter's full, it's pretty clean-ish. Right, Let's see if we can make it. Nine days of graft to get it on the road. Not nine full days, there's been quite a few just two hour, three hour days while I wait for parts, but a big push, big challenge. This Rolls Royce will make it to Wales. Well, it already has made it to Wales, we're actually in Wales now, but it will make it back to my hometown which is where I'm taking you you're gonna see where I grew up and what was around me this thing it is getting better and better with every mile that passes I am doing a very very comfortable very very steady 70 mile an hour 70 mile an hour in this thing it's been sat since 1991 and it's driving like a new Audi you know so so pleased with this i'm just amazed i mean i've not got much further to go now and i really hope it makes it let's just get my head back into it for the next sort of half an hour you know
felt a kind of love like this before You took all the worries from my mind Darling, please forgive me if I stay a little more I can't look away from those brown eyes And if we settle down, we don't have to settle down don't be afraid of all the things that could go wrong And we can take our time And we may change our mind But I can tell a good thing When a good thing comes along Darling, tell me all about the dreams you had last night You can be so restless in your sleep It's the one that you should keep And if we settle down oh, We don't have to settle down Please don't be afraid of all the things that can go wrong That we can take our time And we may change our mind But I can tell a good thing When a good thing comes along If I ever hurt you, dear, oh, I apologize Heaven knows I am no perfect man I can't take another night without you by my side Please come home as quickly as you can And if you settle down Good thing when a good thing comes along. So you see, I grew up around a lot of machinery and stuff. You know, there's always some um, wheeled object knocking about and I think that's what drew my or gave me inspiration if you like for my love of cars it's a cool tractor do a left for dead on that one day or what about this one here looks like it'd fire right up doesn't it you know or these but I think that truck might be a little bit too far gone pretty cool though isn't it God, I'd absolutely love to get this thing going. Look at that. I don't even know what it is. Some sort of tank. So yeah, really enjoyed growing up around here and obviously having this sort of space meant that I could do crazy things with cars. And this Allegro here has really reminded me of my first car, which I had when I was 10 years old. It's the first time I ever turned a spanner on the car was when the start motor went and my uncle, Mike, helped me change the start motor on it when I was 10 years old. Really, really cool. And he, used to, he taught me to drive it and I used to drive up and down the lane, you know. Really good. And this has really reminded me of that. And listen, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed doing it. I'm totally overwhelmed with how well this car's done being sat for that long and just motoring down the motorway like it just did. Very, very impressed. And yeah, you know, if you have enjoyed watching, leave me a comment, leave me a like. I'm so, you know, I'm sorry that it was such a long video. <laughs> Didn't anticipate it being such a long video, but there was a lot to do on this. It was a bit of a challenge. Probably one of my biggest challenges, I would have said, um, getting this thing going. That wire was so frustrating. 
it was hidden inside the loom. Someone had built that wire into the loom. You couldn't see the wire. It went down into the rest of the loom. Nightmare. But we've done it and she's singing. So um, great stuff. I'm going to go and do some family stuff now. Say hello. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.